Well, hi, it's John and Jules here from Australia. If you've got your Bibles with you, or you got your phone so you can look up the Bible verse, we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 12, 14 and 19. I'm going to read from the Message Version, and this is Paul, the Apostle Paul, talking to the church at Corinth. So it says here in verse 14, I want you to think about how all this, now this that Paul is talking about, is the spiritual gifts given to us from the Holy Spirit. I want you to think about how all this makes you more significant, not less. I'm going to jump over to verse 19. It says, but I also want you to think about how this keeps your significance from getting blown up into self-importance. For no matter how significant you are, and you are significant, it's only because of what you are a part of. So the title of our message today that we would love to share with all of us is Redefining Significance. Redefining. It gives you the idea that um, maybe we've all got thoughts about what significance is, and that's why it needs to be redefined. Everyone has different thoughts about significance. We put value on different things in different ways. You know, one of the things Jules and I love to do is head out back, right out into rural Australia, out in the country, and to hang out with some of the church leaders there and just some of the farmers and just encourage people. And we were on a recent trip um, talking to some pastors who are doing a great work. In fact, they are bivocational, which really means they work full time on their ranch, drive into town on Sundays, run church, meet with people, cups of tea and coffee, and then go back and run their ranch for another six days. And we just got talking to them. We're just trying to put a bit of value on them and just giving them some hope for their community. And we started talking about conferences and mixing with other church leaders and what's that like? And they said, can we be honest with you? Sometimes when we finally get the courage just and get, and get the time off to get to these conferences, within the first five questions, nearly everybody says, so how big's your church? <laughs> and we're from a little regional town and our church is not that big. And as soon as we tell them how big our church is, we find that people start looking over our shoulders to talk to other people and it makes us feel very insignificant. So here's a beautiful scripture that actually should encourage all of us with whatever season that we're finding ourselves and whatever we're finding is in our head at any particular time. It says here in 1 Corinthians 1.27 in the NIV version, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Yeah, isn't that incredible? Beautiful. What God chooses. You know, things that um, yeah. are, are great and are big and are strong and are wise, we see those things, we notice those things, but we don't necessarily notice the beginning or the journey of those things. You think about an overnight success, <laughs> nobody's an overnight success, they're only overnight to us, but there's been a lot going on for a long time. So think about a Bible character called David, King David. We all know him as King David, he was an incredible, mighty warrior, he, he led armies and had great victories. He wrote most of the Psalms, there's 150 there, he wrote most of those. We know him as a worshipper, a man after God's own heart. But I wonder whether we know David or if we would have recognized David and placed significance and value on him if we'd seen him at the beginning before he became King David. There's a great passage in 1 Samuel 16 which tells that story and it's where God had said to the prophet Samuel, I want you to go to Jesse, the, the, uh, go to Jesse's household, he's got some sons, and I want you to pick and select the next king of Israel. And so Samuel turns up to Jesse's house and they're all excited and, and Jesse has all his sons lined up and as soon as the prophet walks into the house, he sees, he takes, it says here in verse six, when they arrive, Samuel took one look at Eliab, who is the elder son, tall, handsome, and he thought, surely this is the Lord's anointed. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And so he went, wasn't that one, went to the next son, the next son, the next son, got all through the sons. And then finally the prophet says, is this it? Is there nobody else? And the father says, well, I mean, there is one more. He's out looking after the sheep. How would you feel being David? Right. <laughs> we know him as this majestic king. How would you feel being that little boy left out with the sheep? And finally the prophet says, we're not going anywhere further until you bring that boy here. And as soon as he comes in, he's anointed as the king. Mm. Because we look at what's big and what matters to us, but God passes all of that because he thinks you matter. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about what is significant. Mm. 
Uh, we've been church leaders for a significant season of our lives. And, you know, at, like Joel said, at conferences, there's all different ways that people dis- define what a significant church is. But I think even in this season of COVID, God is using it to redefine significant, Very that good. all shapes are significant, all sizes are significant, all colours are significant. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever season you find yourself, you are significant. So here's what redefining significant looks like. There's a few things we want to focus on just for a few moments. And the first one is this. Yeah, first one is we need to get a revelation of God's definition of significant. So before we start talking about whether you are or who is or what is, we've got to start with God. All our chapters, all our stories, everything must have the same origin. God must define significance and understanding it from his perspective. Have you ever met someone really significant? I remember Hal talking about the story in his book about how he met oh, Mother Teresa. Teresa. I mean, that is a significant <laughs> moment. We all want to meet her. Right. And we he, would have all liked to have met her. Right. And so now we're all part of this organisation birthed out of a moment like that. Um, we've had the chance over the years to, to meet significant people and um, some of the Prime Ministers of Australia. Um, you know, the current one is a Christian, he's a believer, Scott the Prime Minister, and we've known Scott and Jenny for about 15 years. In fact, they were in our church um, as part of our congregation for years before he was the Prime Minister. I remember having breakfast with him and he said, Joel, I really feel like this is what the Lord wants. Calling me into politics. And wants me to become Prime Minister. (laughs) Maybe one day it means I'm going to have to leave here and go somewhere else to try and get another seat in a different city. And, uh, you know, he left our church and went to a different church. And it was just such a great experience. So I get introduced to him now. I know him as Scott. But, you know, we were at a conference recently and he spoke and everyone stood. Please welcome the Prime Minister of Australia, Mr. Scott Morrison. And I don't know whether to bow, curtsy or just give him a high five, you know, because I know him personally, but I know that I carry the weight of his significance and his title. And, you know, that's how God does things. He, he introduces himself. We know God because he tells us who he is. So we start significance from God's perspective because God defines it. There's many times in the scriptures where he introduces himself as his name. Some people just call him God, um, but there are different names and God introduces himself that way. There's this beautiful verse in Exodus chapter six, verse two and three, where it says, and God said to Moses, another significant person we know, not we, I mean we, the collective, God said to Moses, I am Yahweh, right? Which is the Hebrew name that they didn't want to whisper, this real significant name for God. I am Yahweh, the Lord, the Lord of Lords, capital L, the Lord of Lords, the magnificent one. I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai, which is God Almighty, but I did not reveal my name Yahweh to them. So it's giving us this understanding that over time, God has revealed different facets of his name, different parts of his character. In fact, in Genesis, he says, I'm El Shaddai, In chapter 22, he says, I'm Jehovah Jireh. I'm the one who provides. He also says, I'm Jehovah Rapha. I'm the one who heals you. My favorite story, I think, about this context context is when there's a single mother who's driven out from community and she's all by herself with her little baby who's about to die. They've got nothing to eat. They're starving. They're isolated and rejected. And she puts the baby down underneath the tree. This is Hagar and goes over to to die. And then the Lord himself, Yahweh turns up and says, what's wrong, why are you crying? And she says, I've been abandoned and rejected. And the Lord himself says, no, I see you. And that's where we get that name, El Roy, the God who sees. And so all throughout scripture, God introduces himself. And the reason God says, I'm the one who heals you, I'm the one who provides for you, I'm the one who leads you, shepherds you, cares for you, protects you, fights for you, is because God loves you. The reason he does all this is because you are significant. Yeah, so the second thought that we want to share with you in redefining significant is two, is a revelation that you are significant. Yeah. You, you are significant. Yeah. We read about that in Genesis 1, right at the beginning of the Bible. It says in verse 27, so God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. Just the fact that we have been created in the image of the creator makes us significant. 
let alone that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. Mm. And then he sent us and gave us his Holy Spirit to be with us. The levels of significance just because we belong to Christ is so incredible. Yeah, it is. You know, we know our true value and significant lies in Christ when we find contentment. Mm. There's a really powerful word, contentment. Mm. When we find contentment in belonging to Jesus and what he's assigned to us to do. So I want to say this statement, our calling never changes, but our assignments do. Yeah, that's good. And then go back to the idea of contentment. So it says here in Philippians 4, 11 to 12, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I've learned to be content wherever, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content Love. in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. When we're in want, yeah. it's like this idea of contentment feels so far away. When we've got plenty, mm. the idea of contentment is like, we're okay. But what Jesus is saying here, or what Paul is saying here to the church at Philippi, is that we, we find true contentment when we find that in Jesus. Yeah. No matter what the assignment that we have. It's beautiful because sometimes we can think that our significance is related to our circumstances. Maybe it's our assignment, maybe it's our job, maybe it's our title. Maybe it's where you get to sit at yeah. church or where you, what office or whether you get to go to the new building that we're about to build in Springfield. It's all those different things. But when those temporary things change, if significance is that, then when that changes, my significance changes. That's why we're starting with God defines it mm. and you are significant. You're completely significant. Not, not the, the trimmings and the trappings. You'll find contentment in Christ regardless of our circumstances. We found ourselves in a changing season last year when our daughter got married <laughs> and it was a beautiful season, a beautiful time. But because we talked about it, hey, we talked about it for years before she got married. In, in fact, when he says we, we talked about it for years, the moment our daughter was born, yeah. the image that he got was giving her away to her husband. That's true. <laughs> that is true. We didn't know she was going to be a boy or a girl. And so when I found out she was a girl, the Lord showed me that the first picture I had of Harmony was me walking her down the aisle. Yeah. And so all I've tried to do all these years is just raise her to release her. But if my significance as a father was about having her with me in our home, then when she leaves, my significance leaves. In yeah. fact, we would say that the, because we can release her, we yeah. become more significant to her, that if we tried to hold her and control her and keep her here, we would have been less significant in her life. So there's all different ways that we determine our significance. But God sees us significant yeah. because of what Christ has done for us, yeah. which leads us or leads us to yeah. the last thought, which is a revelation of what you do is significant. What you do. what you do is significant. What you do right now is significant. So we've talked about the fact before you do anything, you are significant. But we also want to suggest that what you're doing right now in the here and now mm -hmm. in this season of your life, what you're doing is significant. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So I guess the question that we want to leave all of us today is this. What is in your hand? What is in your hand right now? Yeah. yeah it's, it's not trying to become bigger or become more or try and do grander things, greater things. Bigger is not better. It's just... Bigger. <laughs> so think about what Julia is saying, like what's in your hand, what, what, what opportunity do we have right now? Because we may discount it because it doesn't look significant, it doesn't look big, but it could be significant for others. We have this beautiful family of friends of ours that are Chinese and um, you know, my mum passed away just a couple of months ago now and the tradition in the Chinese is they give these little red envelopes that have cash in them and they give them to family members or friends for significant moments. And this is a significant moment. So they gave us a card and I opened it with beautiful words from this couple. And in it was this Chinese red envelope, um, which I was already familiar with. And so I opened it and there was money in it, like hundreds of dollars. Um, and I was so moved by that gesture. But inside this envelope was another card from my dad who they've not met, they don't know my dad, who's not a church guy. 
And so when Dad was over recently, I gave them the card and I explained, you know, who, our friends, they're Chinese, um, it's just a custom that they, they do sometimes. And he opened it and he read it and then he had, I, I noticed, I was kind of peeking over his shoulder and I noticed that there was a red envelope in his card too. And I thought, oh, they've done the same thing. And so he opened this red envelope and you could see tears well up in his eyes as he pulled out $100 from people he's never met, which seems like such a small thing to do that carried such great significance. And so we just want to leave you with that thought that don't discount anything that we're doing today. It probably is quite significant for people around us. Yeah. And the reason it's significant is because you are significant. And the reason you are significant is because God says so. It starts with him. He decides the value of people and of things. And because he says so, you are. And because you are, what you do next is absolutely incredible. It's so beautiful. And so we'd love to pray for you today if you would allow us to do that. We're going to pray that the Holy Spirit really consolidates his word in all of our hearts. I, I think that it would be great if we could pray for Haiti. They've just suffered another earthquake, which is devastating. What's happening um, with the Afghanist, uh, Afghani people mm. in Afghanistan is devastating. Um, on, on my heart, I've got the women uh, of Afghanistan, which are also, they're saying they are possibly yeah. heading into some of the darkest season of their life and existence in that country. So we've got so many things to pray for, but we want to pray for you too. We want to pray for the people of Haiti and Afghanistan, but we want to pray for you. Yeah. So allow us to do that if you want. Yeah, that's great. God, you are so amazing. We thank you that you are significant. You're the most significant yeah. and benevolent being in the entire universe. And we're grateful because of that. You, you decide that people matter. They matter to you and they should matter to us. And so, Father, we just ask that uh, every person that's joining us in chapel right now would just sense your presence and your love, your kindness, your great compassion toward us. And Lord, in that, that we would realize that the little things that we do, they are significant. And even if they only matter to a few people, Lord, they still matter to you. And we turn our hearts now, our attention to places like Haiti and Afghanistan and yes, different Jesus. parts of the world, Lord, that we are not even working in yet, but not even understanding the, the, the turmoil. But Lord, we ask that you would raise up other people, great people yes, that, that can Jesus. serve these people, that, that Lord, people that are able to, maybe it's something that we could partner with, but even if we can't, Lord, that you would raise up people for your mm -hmm. sake, for your name's sake, and that you would heal people, you would heal country, heal, heal land, God, that you would heal governments, Lord, that you would give us it, just any kind of opportunity to serve people the way that you would serve them if you were still here, Jesus. For your sake, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and thanks for the allowing us the privilege of speaking the word of God to you today. Mm -hmm.